ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. It's 4 p.m. local time now. Thank you for joining us on Court TV News. Uh, I am Frank of Malape, and here are some of the stories we're filing at this time. As uh, speculations grow on who will emerge as a running mate to its presidential candidate, Muhammad Buhari, the All Progressives Congress has assured Nigerians that the choice of its presidential running mate will be made within the context of the best democratic ideals, just like that of its presidential candidate. In a statement issued in Lagos on Sunday by its National Publicity Secretary, Law Mohammed, the party urged Nigerians to ignore the widespread and misleading reports in the traditional and social media about the choice of the APC presidential running mate, saying the party has not had a meeting even not to talk of picking a running mate. It described the report that a running mate has been picked to run with each presidential candidate, Muhammad Buhari, as unnecessarily sensational and totally misleading. The party said every one of the candidates would have been speculated as a running mate to Buhari is unquestionably competent to be a vice president or even president of Nigeria, but added that no choice has been made by the party. The party also expressed its appreciation of the feedback its presidential primaries has brought to it from Nigerians, assuring that it will, it will be a, a, a good one for the party. The party also says that the subsequent decisions, it will reveal it to everyone. Away from that now, Chairman of the All Progressive Congress in Oyo State, Aki Oke, says he is disappointed at the former governor of the state, Adebayo Lawakala, for his decision to defer from the People's Democratic Party to the Labour Party of, to the, instead of the APC. Alao Akala had joined the Labour Party on the day the PDP held its governorship primary election in Abado the state capital in protest against the outcome of the exercise. He says that Lawakala is a political heavyweight in the state, but that thought the APC may not have given him the governorship ticket. He will have gotten a senatorial ticket and with bright chances of success at the polls. Okay, I doubt that most as governors with eight-year tenures ended up in the Senate. He said the APC would have given him the chance to achieve that easily. He says the former governor will regret his decision to go to the Labour Party due to the course of his campaigns and the fact that his chances of winning is very slim, wondering who could have given him such wrong advice. As the general elections gradually approach and the girl of the faction over party ticket hit parties, the All Progressive Grand Alliance has compelled members of the ruling People's Democratic Party who defected to the party in Bayosa State to sign an undertaking before they would be given the party's ticket. Scores of the aggrieved members of the PDP who had on Tuesday shunned the reconciliation committee headed by King Amali Titana and had picked the ticket of Abga to fly the flag of the party to contest the 2015 elections. The PDP members such as a former president of the Ijo Youth Congress, John John Oyeifa, and a former commissioner in Bayoso State, Zua Kuduga, picked the ticket to represent their various constituencies at the next general election in the state on the platform of Abga. However, it was learned that Abga accepted the defecting PDP members on the condition that they would sign an undertaking promising that they would not abandon the party when elected into the state and national assemblies in 2015, a development confirmed by John Sokari, the state chairman of the party. The Abga state chairman also dismissed the claim that the mass defection into the party by PDP members was influenced by the wife of President Kulok Jonathan Patience as Fichiers. A former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Okwesilize Mwodo, is set to bat the incumbent chairman of the party, Adam Mozo, and other members of the National Working Committee over the outcome 
of party senatorial's primary conducted in Enugu North senatorial zone. The former national chairman of the party is said not to be comfortable with the party's subtle plan to adopt the result of the primary submitted by the electoral panel led by Anthony George Manzo, which was said to have declared Chukwuba Utazi as the party's candidate for Enugu North senatorial zone. At the Manzo led election, which was at the government field in Suka, Utazi polled 324 votes to beat Umodo, who scored made four votes, while another aspirant, Martin Oke, scored three votes. Umodo was, however, pronounced winner of the election at another primary. A member of the party's National Working Committee, however, said that the party has taken a position to recognize the results submitted by Manzo, who incidentally is the chief of staff to Senate President David Mack. Several persons were feared dead and many others injured on Saturday night in an explosion at a gas station along Arakale Road in Akure. Eyewitnesses say the fire started at about 7 p.m. during the sale of gas within the station, which is located a few meters away from a branch of a bank and a church. There was chaos and confusion as residents ran for cover. I see uh, some people, they shout, say fire, 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 fire. By the time I look out, I see the fire, it, it don't raise up. We don't have government. We what don't what have happened for this? They say na, na gas, it will cause all this fire. Eh? They say na gas, it will cause all this fire. I, we, what, I, I, and I say that, I say we don't have a fire fight. They say we don't have fire fight. Because of what? Fire fight is there, everything is there. But what is the reason why by the fire fight don't come for this place? Eh? <laughs> You're still watching Call TV News on the hour. We'll take a break shortly. We'll be back with more stories after this time out. Stay with us. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will he, come, will he want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. For more updates on our news and other programs, visit our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. You can also log on to our Twitter handle at Court TV News NG. And our YouTube page is youtube.com forward slash Court TV David Space The News. Following the recapture of Mobi Town and its environs in Adamawa State by the Nigerian military, the Emir of Mobi has visited the community in company of the state governor, Balang Gelari, who was, was represented by his chief of staff. A correspondent, Martin Dixon, reports that no mercy has since returned to the area. <laughs> A group of women thanking the state government and service chiefs for their intervention and dislodging the Boko Haram terrorists from the town. They are back on the farm harvesting their crops. The level of destruction at Marabo Mubi is overwhelming. With houses and business centers destroyed, some are burnt down. Bullet marks are seen on buildings all over the place. Destroy the foundation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely. So yeah. even now, the one they said to that candidate, 
A few people are seen in Mubi town, signifying a return of peace and calmness to the troubled commercial city. The commissioner of police says the police are already stationed in the town to maintain peace and order. The, the assessment is what you are seeing now. You see that everywhere is peaceful. Everywhere is peaceful, and uh, we thank God for the work being done by the forces. Uh, as you can see yourself, everywhere is peaceful, and we appeal to everybody to come back and continue with their normal business. On his first visit since the attacks in Mubi, the Emir of Mubi, Abubakar Isa Amadu, says he returned with the aim of staying in his palace, but found out that the palace has been vandalized. When I entered my inside the palace, <coughs> I found that they have bungled a lot of things in the palace. The doors, the windows are all bungled. Some of the items are missing. So when these things are, are placed and set to, to, to normalcy, I will come back. But of now, I have no idea to stay. Even my doors are broken. Some of the products have been stolen. Even three of my cars have been stolen. But that one does not matter. Anything. But the doors and the windows are bungled. And some of the items have been stolen, which I will not tell you. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So when these are taken to place and the windows and those are taken to shape, I will soon come. Speaking after the inspection, Adama State Governor, represented by the Chief of Staff, Jibadu Tijani, sounded optimistic that the ban on vehicular movement from Hong to Mubi and Michika will be lifted soon, following the return of peace to the area. We thank the executive governor of Adama State, Barrister Bala James Glari, for the political will and support. Uh, we thank all the security agencies who stood uh, by us in Adama State. And as you can see, the people of Mubi are very happy uh, by seeing us in town. Mubi and its environs is now under the full control of Nigerian forces, and they are reported to have also recaptured Michika local government area. The government has pleaded with those who ran away to go back to their houses as normalcy has returned to the troubled towns. The challenge that residents of the area will encounter will center around rebuilding their houses and businesses. Picking up the pieces of their lives will definitely require assistance. Martins Dixon, Core TV News, Yola. Although the military says many towns have now been retaken, including the commercial hub of Mubi, those internally displaced from the town have, like their monarch, also decided to stay away from home over what the term precarious security situation. They recount their experiences in the hands of the dreaded Boko Haram insurgents in this report. Boko Haram killed two of Rebecca's four children. She fled her home and has been in this camp in northeastern Nigeria for the past months. This camp shelters just a few hundred of an estimated 1.5 million people who are internally displaced in Nigeria, fleeing the attacks by the terrorist group. For the past three years, we have been enduring insurgents' attacks. Recently, we were driven out from our communities by the insurgents. We ran into the bush and found our way to this camp. They killed a lot of people and burnt our houses. Living conditions here are basic and at least they are safe. So far, Yola has not been attacked. Boko Haram has never made any raids within 100 kilometers of here. Even so, people in the camp are worried. Ayuba used to sell Bibles in Mubi near the border with Cameroon. He fled when he saw the army forced into retreat by Boko Haram. The military run leave us there. That's why everybody in Mubi starts run. Humanitarian NGOs and religious groups are working to help those who have been forced to leave their homes and their livelihoods with only the few possessions they could carry. On a weekly basis, we invite those that are living with family and friends in order to come and collect some food stuff here, what we'll be able to take care of a family of five for at least one week. 13,000 people have been killed since the beginning of Boko Haram's insurgents in 2009. The army seems unable to bring the terror threats to an end, leaving the displaced facing an uncertain future, waiting for the day they will be able to return home. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army has reaffirmed its determination to win the ongoing war against the Boko Haram insurgents. 
Atim Brigade Commander 23 Armored Brigade of the Nigerian Army Yola Abakupola stated each on Saturday while decorating three newly promoted senior officers of the brigade. Popola said that the battle could only be won when officers and men of the brigade and others deploy for the operation improve their skills and intelligence network. He gave an assurance of that the Nigerian Army will continue to provide all necessary logistics and encouragement to enable those engaged in the battle to excel. Popola stressed that the welfare of such officers will be given special attention on regular basis. The acting brigade commander said that the newly promoted officers deserve their new ranks. He reminded the officers that in Nigerian army, the higher one goes, the older it becomes. Responding on behalf of the newly promoted officers, Gariba pledged their loyalty to the army as the new ranks would ginger them to redouble their services to the nation. APC candidate for the 2015 presidential election, Muhammad Buhari, has condemned the recent bombings in Kano and just saying the actions of the terrorists not sanctioned by any religion will not succeed. In a statement by the All Progressive Congress, presidential candidates made available to journalists on Saturday, Buhari said the nation will overcome its present challenges. He commiserated with the victims and their family members while praying that God will grant reports to the souls of the departed and comfort those who lost loved ones. He also urged other Nigerians to demonstrate their time-tested compassion by providing support and succor to those affected in their hour of need. Buhari assured the long-suffering fellow citizens who have borne the brunt of the almost daily senseless attacks that help is on its way. With the emergence of President Gulag Jonathan and Muhammad Buhari as presidential candidate of the PDP and APC ahead next February poll, Nigerians will again have the opportunity of choosing who are among the two as well as candidates of other parties will best rule the country come 2015. So, what qualities are Nigerians waiting to see in the leadership that will steer the nation's ship in the next dispensation? Find out the answers in this report by Uluashi Adeguke. The much-awaited presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress has finally emerged in the person of Muhammadu Buhari. And with President Gulag Jonathan emerging the People's Democratic Party's consensus candidate, the stage is now set for the two major political parties in Nigeria to slog it out at the 2015 general polls. With rising inflation and economic downturn, coupled with endemic corruption and rising insecurity, Nigerians are stiff worried over the kind of leadership will bring them soko. So, who in the opinions of these average Nigerians is best suited for the job come 2015? The God-fearing president to be president of Nigeria, someone that fear God should be the president of Nigeria, have the man, woman being feelings, not just a president that take money, embezzle money. You know, we are sovereign in this Nigeria. We are looking for the one that's going to change and give us better, uh, better economics in this Nigeria. We, just, we need a God-fearing president, a God-fearing president, a president that we think that he can think that he can die tomorrow. You know what I mean? So if, if you have such a president, I thought that the Nigeria can move forward. This political analyst, however, advised Nigerians to do away with sentiments when picking their choice of president in 2015. You know, but the reality is that the people are going to make a choice. The only thing that worries me about the choice that the people might make is the fact that uh, sentiments based on uh, the geopolitics of this country, based on uh, religion and so on, might play a part. And whenever sentiments, such sentiments play a part in determining political leadership, a mistake is usually made. You know, so we, we have to be as objective as we can in making this very important choice, choice when we go to the polls. A Lagos-based lawyer, G.T. Ogunye, is worried about the spates of corruption in the country. For him, the nation's problems in other areas will end if the issue of graft is tackled with all seriousness. He added that the next presidential leadership must develop the required political will to fight the menace to a standstill. Uh, the kind of president that we all need in 2015 is that man that can offer responsive, responsible, and constructive leadership. 
a man that has the courage of his own convictions, who is willing, ready, and able to tackle the monster of corruption. For his part, a political scientist, Dele Ashiru, seeks a diligent president for Nigeria come 2015 and thereafter. We need a government that is knowledge driven, that is hard working, diligent on his duties. I mean, not a flamboyant and, and deceitful and, and not too stellar individual as the president of Nigeria. I think today we need a president who is well informed, who is courageous enough to take decisive decisions. And we need somebody, we need a president who will be prepared to rock the boat. Unless they rock the boat in Nigeria, Nigeria may continue to wallow in this uh, endless pit of indolence. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride. So says a popular adage. How this come to play in the quality of the president Nigerians pick come 2015 is best imagined at this moment in time. But time, they say, is the ultimate judge. Oluwase Yadeguke, Court TV News, Lagos. The defiance of a court order by former President Olusegun Obasanjo over the publication and launching of, uh, of his new book, My Watch, has not stopped to generate reactions. This time, the Commissioner of Justice and Attorney General of Ekiti State, Owoshi Eniajai, while speaking with selected journalists as a briefing, berates Obasanjo for disrespecting court order and describe him as a lord of mania. Rashi Rashi tells us more in this report. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Ekiti State, Uwoshi Eniajai, says the eventual publication and launching of ex-president Obasanjo's autobiography in the face of a court order was a serious breach of the law. In the lexicon of our legal jurisprudence, a court order, however frivolous, must be obeyed until discharged by that court or set aside by a superior court. It is therefore a deliberate impunity and disregard to the rule of law and our judiciary for Chief Olusha Gombaso to disobey the said order made by a competent court of law. When asked if Obasanjo may be acting contrary to the court order due to one technical default or the other in the constitution, Owoshieni says Obasanjo has no hiding place under the law. They were admitting publicly that there was a court order stopping him for publishing and circulating was sufficient enough for him to know that he ought to have given respect to the judiciary. So, hiding, hiding under uh, other logistics, other technicalities, will not, will not solve the problem of flouting the court order. Making reference to portions in the book where Obasanjo maligned all past and current leaders of Nigeria, Owosheni says the former president is not a saint either. Chief Olusha Obasanjo must be told in truth, must told the truth that he is not the saint in the class of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why other former and present rulers are satanic agents to be sent to the gallows for persecution? The court injunction to stop the book launch was obtained by a chieftain of the PDP in Ogun State, Buruji Kasham. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adoekiti. Uh, so in Nigeria now, two days after a stark warning issued by United States Secretary of State John Kerry over the danger inherent in failure to reach an agreement on the climate change deal at a conference in Lima, the Peruvian capital. United Nations members have reached an agreement on how countries should tackle climate change. Delegates at the Lima summit have approved a framework for setting national pledges to be submitted to its summit next year. The summit, which was initially scheduled to end on Friday, was extended by two days as a result of differences which have now been ironed out to produce a deal described by environmental groups which have criticized the deal as a weak and ineffectual compromise. Environmentalists also say the talks proved difficult because of the visions between rich and poor countries over how to spread the burden of pledges to cut carbon emissions has only produced a deal which weakens all international environmental rules. In his reaction, Peru's Envir Environment Minister Manuel Pegra Vida, who chaired the talk, says the text is not perfect but is one that includes the position of all parties. 
Well, and that's a wrap on Call TV News at this time. Many thanks for watching. I am Frank Manape. I'll see you again.